like food tastes like ash in his mouth. Interesting. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, if that got um, broke, that kind of part of the curse. Or you're right. I'm not sure the with the deep dive on on how he can you know get his dick up when really he can't taste anything. So I'm not sure how it works. Can't get your dick <laughs> up if you got can't taste anything. That's the COVID <laughs> promise right there. <laughs> <laughs> very true very true yeah what's up everyone welcome to plastic arts podcast my name is fonzie i'm joined by my co-host indie game dev extraordinaire and beautiful man gavin jones gavin how the fuck are you doing so you got that somewhere right my name is gavin jones <laughs> <laughs> i'm good i'm good uh it's a good weekend uh overall and uh yeah a lot, a lot of news a lot of news excited very excited. Yep, a lot of stuff. It's happening. It's all you know. I, I imagine as we get closer to the next gen, it's just all shit show of, of news and yeah. Um, yeah. No. Uh, as far as the weekend goes, I mean, we hung out for a bit, but uh, like anything else crazy going on? Uh, no, I don't think I played any games or anything this week. Let me let me double check here, but I feel like the answer is a hard no. I played. Some what do you think of fire? But uh, that's kind of your jam. That's always your like your comfort food go to. Yeah, like if I got some time, I think I played a little bit of uh, Team Fight Tactics. the The big thing I've been playing around with um, lately is, and I think I told you, like I've been back at the Rubik's Cube, um, trying to get down. Uh, I had to be able to do the first, the very first bit uh, with my eyes closed. Um, mm. So that's been uh, difficult, um, but it actually yeah. makes it a puzzle again because um, when once you get decent at the rubik's cube kind of gets rid of the puzzle portion but now that i had to be able to figure out all my opening moves um and be able to execute them and then there are certain other moves i had to be able to memorize so good that i can do them with my eyes closed so that's been uh, a challenge and i fuck up constantly um (laughs) but uh you know it's part of the process um so that's been that's been fun yeah What'd you think of that? Uh, those ribs I, I uh, smoked you the other day. Like, uh, do you think after you know you've had time to sit on it, did you dig them? You like them? Those were great, absolutely. Yeah. Ten out of ten. Um, it's it's kind of like we discussed. Um, you know, now that you've you've messed around with, and I really like those as is. But now that you've messed with, you know, dealing with somebody else's dry rub, uh, now you can kind of mess around with your own. But that being said, like you could just show up to those at you know a picnic, and people would be like, "Damn!" They wouldn't even mm-hmm. know. Uh, <laughs> you didn't do that yourself. And like I said, that was my first time having, you know, ribs that weren't slathered in barbecue sauce. And I thought, yeah, I, I was impressed. Well, I mean, now I'm going down the rabbit hole like this weekend after, you know, we grilled that stuff. I was going and watching more YouTube and tutorials and how to smoke. And, it. Yeah. <laughs> you it's just my next hobby is now that's your, <laughs> that's your thing. You now collect hobbies. I need more money so I can just fully just do all these things and not just kind of half-ass them. But yeah, like I was going down this rabbit hole and watching these dope videos and I found the right formula. So I found the more Southern the dude sounds, the fatter he is, the wider he is, the more I trust his like smoking judgment, grill, grilling judgment. That's, so I that's find the like- thing though. There's different, like when you think like barbecue, there's different types of barbecue. Like it, your Texas barbecue is going to be different than your Louisiana barbecue. It's going to be different than like, there are other states that are famous for your barbecue. So the Southern accent isn't necessarily the the catch all be all. It's sort of that's what I'm looking for. I'm yeah. looking for for large, white, thick guys that if they have a Confederate flag in the background, Trump hat, even better. I feel like that translates to their grill skills to be, you know, I, I trust them. I find I trust you're, them more. You're trying to make barbecuing uh great again. <laughs> yeah. Not that it was ever okay. bad. I don't know, unless you're like using a tire fire to uh barbecue your food that <laughs> might be a technique gives it that rubbery flavor that uh <laughs> you really want tastes like cancer that's the uh <laughs> yeah but that's just added to the list of other bullshit that i'm uh messing around with but yeah no i love it and i'm gonna try and just smoke more and and find i need to get an actual smoker i was looking into that too like the cheapest kind of thing i can find sure. to actually smoke would you would you consider trying the alton brown cardboard box smoker I wouldn't doubt it. If it's, you know, uh, a deal, you know, if I can just make that with cardboard and tinfoil, bam, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely down to try that. So he mentions in his video that you need a thick cardboard. And I think I have a couple of thick cardboard boxes in my garage. There was one I was cutting off the top the other day. And I'm like, this shit is way thicker than I was expecting. So I may ah. have 
I, I forget the rest of the pieces, but he said it was one of his best like life hacks that he ever did on the show. It was a cardboard smoker. Okay. Yeah, I'm down to try that. Um, as far as games, I, I was playing a little bit of, and I talked to you about it, of Mortal Shell. I tried the beta that, mm. that came out. And I stuck with it for a good hour, but I was just getting my ass kicked way too much, and it just wasn't fun anymore at all. Yeah. But uh, I, I it's also bad. like I realized it's not for me. Right. I did feel bad coming into the stream because you looked uh, defeated. <laughs> I was. I felt I felt it. It was just like, um, but I was trying to give it a chance. Like, that's one thing I'm trying to yeah. do a bit more is break out of my comfort zone and play those, these other games. And it looked beautiful, too. Like, I I really wanted to enjoy it, but it's also just not for me. It's not uh, arcadey. It's not actiony. It's really just brutal. And you have to understand the mechanics, much yeah. like those Souls games. And so it was that, to, you know, times a thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was definitely surprised with the soul streamers that were having having a tough time with this one. So this is mm. this is not the entry point, I think, uh, is what is kind of what we've learned. It sounds like maybe the surge, maybe a um, what's that souls like game that's a little fluffier, um, like Pokemon Go or something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Pokemon Go is what I was trying to come up with. No, it's uh, is it really not going to pop up right away? That's dumb. I guess you could try a Neo. I don't know if that's harder or easier. It's probably harder. You know what? I've heard a Neo, or there's another one. It's like in a, not a feudal Japan, but it's like a Japanese kind of style. It's uh, uh, Sekiro? Yeah, Sekiro. That's, Look cool. Yeah, that's going to be quite a bit different. Because um, it's more about, like, you've got this whole parry system. Uh, and it looks fucking rough. Uh, yeah, like, I just wish they were more forgiving, but I know that that's not the point. Staring right at a screenshot. Oh, Lords of the Fallen. Um, I've heard that name before. Yeah, I. the The biggest issue is it was super buggy and it would crash a lot when it's launched. I that was sort of people's big issue. So it was sort of an, like an okay uh, Dark Souls. It was a little more arcadey, and I think that could be potentially uh, a good entry point into the genre. It was also fucking gorgeous, um, especially at a time when the Dark Souls games were not. Um, so you sort of have that. Uh, and now it's Lords of the Fallen. I'll check it out. Although with the Mortal Shell beta, what's the point with those kind of Souls games of having a beta? Are they really trying to calibrate like how hard it is and maybe adjust based on like the reaction? Or what's the... Because there's no like multiplayer Was this you know, a beta servers. or was this a demo? This seems this more is like a, beta. a demo. I mean, they use the term beta. So I feel like they did that for uh, a reason. But I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, are they going to calibrate now after feedback or... I, I think make they it said harder. the word. I think they said the word beta. I think what they meant to use was demo. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, or they go, or they listen to everyone's complaining, and then they go, Look, "We're going to make it harder now, just to, an extra like fuck you to this right. group." But that, but they also secretly want that. They want it to be even more just brutally unforgiving. Sure, sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I know there was uh you know a few things where where streamers were kind of saying like, hey, you know, if they they changed. Uh, tweak this a little bit, um, you know, change that. There were two classes, I think, available in it. Um, and they were saying if you tweak uh, the one with uh, super high <clears throat> stamina um, just a little bit, um, you could, you know, it could be doable. Um, but his just the way his weapon, they didn't like his weapon, uh, at least the streamer mm. I was watching. So that was sort of interesting. Uh, that being said, like different weapons give you different flavors, uh, different people like different stuff. So I, I guess that's that second element to this game that's tricky. It's yeah. not just pick your weapon, pick your pick all your stats. Now it's your stats uh, are tied to your weapon. Uh, it's all together. And I don't know really what the customizable skill trees even how that's going to work uh, in this. I would have enjoyed because I was just at a certain point towards the end, I was just trying to run as fast as I could, like around enemies. And obviously that's not the point of the game. I was just trying to sprint and just trying to survive. But I loved how creepy and just dark and how the the models, the like character design is so cool and just just fucking like a like a nightmare. I want to be in that world as maybe like a survival horror game or something like that. I love what they're creating with the enemies. It's just I can't play the game. So running past the enemies in a Dark Souls game, especially with a boss, is normal. That's usually the save point is not right next to the boss, so you can't just keep diving back in. You have to do what's called the run back. So that's normal. Usually you'll fight okay. like you won't. You'll either avoid all of the enemies altogether or you'll fight like one or two 
Um, but yeah, the run back is a thing. So that's what you I were see. doing is normal. Okay, I didn't feel like that because I felt like I was just trying to survive and, and not engage. But then at a certain point, I did reach a boss and I had to fight him. Like there was no yeah. way to proceed after him. And he was just brutally hard. There's also no way to pause the game, like to adjust your settings. It's like once right. you're playing it, you're playing it. And I found that also extra uh, it's also frustrating. Dark Souls. But... Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. They, they do have a pause pause. Um, but yeah. So like that's... I'm plugging your PC or what do you have you fully pause? No, it? I think, yeah, I think there usually is a pause, but it's like nothing, no useful menus. It's like save or do something else. Um, but, uh, and it's like a hard save. Like when you come back, you're coming back to that point. If you die, you won't come back. <laughs> so it's back like mid swing. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Um, but yeah, the run back is definitely a thing. So it's it's neat that you organically figured that out. <laughs> I guess so, man. Uh, I wanted to, to love it, but it's just, that's my relationship with that kind of style of gameplay. It's like, I just can't get into it, but I'm on the fence, like looking at it, like, man, that, that looks so dope. I wish I could wrap my brain around that style of gameplay and have fun with it. But it's yeah. maybe just not for me. I, I really want to try Dark Souls one of these days. I think that the bit is like, I do have a bit of an addictive personality. So if I do like it, there's like between Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, there's probably like a couple hundred hours worth of gameplay there. Oh, yeah. Um, and also, when I watch streamers play these bosses, there's a lot of bullshittery. Um, How so? Dumb ways to get hit. Uh, like, you're, you know, you're fighting a bunch of enemies at once and somebody's going to come at you from a weird angle. Like, they know how to manipulate it. Like, when I'm watching uh, Happy Hob, um, you know, do his, his runs where he doesn't get hit, um, but he has to do so much manipulation to not get hit. And I don't think that's fun. I feel I like the design philosophy of your, you know, your health bar is like a mistake meter. And, hmm. you know, each little chunk, that's this is the amount of mistakes you're allowed to make per boss battle. Um, and with this, it's sort of throws that philosophy out the window. And I don't really think that's fair. Gotcha. Yeah, I'd like them to rename it like a catch you, caught you slipping meter, you know? So it's like, oh, they caught right. me slipping again, caught me yeah. slipping again. I noticed, yeah, in, in, in uh, Mortal Shell, you have maybe three uh, chances to get hit, and especially with, like the harder enemies, they can hit you once and you're dead. And right. it was just, man, it was brutal. But um, Beautiful World ran really well too. No complaints there. It was just, I can't play the fucking game. I did hear the mechanic was pretty cool where like you're mid swing and then you harden. And then like your enemy will like bounce off of you and then you can yeah. freeze and take them out. I, I hear that's pretty cool. I couldn't master that, but it was that was interesting, too. And I think some of the enemies did that to me as well. So you have to kind of oh, know what you're doing. Um, but uh, yeah, that was cool. I just didn't know what the hell I was uh, controlling there. But yeah, I saw that mechanic and overall, yeah, it's cool. It's just uh, it's this whole genre is not for me. It's just a bummer because I wish it was. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Well, we got about a thousand and one news stories here, <laughs> so we should probably start just yes. chopping them down left and right. Let's chop them down, Gavin. Uh, we got some big ones. So Ubisoft Forward had their event where they showed off uh, some stuff, some good stuff. So we got uh, the, there was an overview from the Verge.com. Jay Peters has the article here. Uh, the four biggest announcements from Ubisoft Forward. Mm -hmm. Ubisoft, like many other video game companies, was enabled to host its typical in-person press conference at E3 in June due to COVID-19 pandemic. Instead, it hosted a digital event on Sunday called Ubisoft Forward, revealing more about its upcoming games. Those included Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Watch Dogs Legion, its newly announced Battle Royale shooter Hyperscape, which I did try. I forgot to mention that. Um, oh, Watch shit. Dogs Legion. How do you, how'd you get into it? So now the it's just open. It's just open beta or Ubisoft launcher. You do, and it's kind of a terrible launcher. That's my first experience with it, but it is you. It's possible, and I tried just literally one match, and of course I died pretty quickly. Sure. But there's a there's a lot going on. There's a lot of stuff they're throwing at you, but it mm -hmm. seems cool because it's this cityscape, and so there's a lot more verticality and ways to find cover. I didn't find any of that cover. I just got shot instantly. But it it's is not, really cool. Yeah, it's almost not about cover. It's about movement and like your cover is a whole fucking building if you're getting behind cover, right. basically um yeah that looks pretty neat yeah i literally just tried one one game of it but now it's it's up there so you can you can try it and jump in and um it ran really really well it's got this really cool like just neon um, you know sci-fi look to it but also this just crazy cityscape and you have the ability to turn into like a ball almost like metroid i haven't yeah. figured out that mechanic yet but you can do that for some right. reason and um yeah no it's cool but uh i'm you also battling the whole yeah, I'm down. I'm also battling the whole like keyboard mechanics. I'm trying to get better at it. So sure. I suck really bad right now. So that was probably also why I died instantly. But um, yeah, so it is there. It's it's up for anyone to try. 
I'm I'm very surprised at how quickly streamers uh, took to it. Like when I when I mm. saw it from a distance, the problem is it's sort of an abstract game, right? Like this is all like a simulator. Uh, it's almost like something you'd see in a movie as an interpretation of a video game. Polygons yep. everywhere. Um, but people are loving it. And I really think that's a style of sub. I think it's a factor of substance over style. Mm. Like the skin of this game could pretty much be what the fuck ever. But it probably should be superheroes. I think it should have been superheroes. Um, but um, yeah, the gameplay is tight. Uh, a lot of streamers just loving it. I do think it's from what i gather it seems like it's probably more fun to play than it is to watch i really don't find it that fun to watch mm. um but yeah people are loving it they're loving the fast-paced action i was watching some guy last night like epic ending where he got three perfect headshots in a row and just took out a team like nice. some you're getting these these pro gamer moves um <laughs> And it, it allows it with all these systems and you kind of like the way you build up your weapon by collecting more of the same weapon. Yeah. I don't know that that's been done yet in a battle royale as simple as a mechanic as that is. I'm not sure it's been done. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool. I need to jump in more than the, just the one game that I played, but yeah. And now it's kind of, I think they, that what might've been Sunday night or Saturday night. I forget. No, I guess it was Sunday night. Cause it was after the Ubisoft thing. But uh, so that is an open beta now. Anybody can play it. But yeah, as far as the other stuff they announced at the Ubisoft Forward, there's Far Cry 6. So I have the trailer, you yeah. know, if you want to go into it. But how did you feel about them finally? Because there was that leak of the, the main villain. But how do you feel about them continuing the story and like the decision to take over this, you know, this this new island and going back to that? So something I'd like to point out is so when we, we hung out on uh, Saturday and uh, we were having a conversation about the leak uh, for Far Cry. And honestly, I don't feel like the leak uh, took away it. Well, maybe it did a little bit. I think it would have been cooler if like we were trying to guess what this was. Sure. Um, the production values, that being said, the production values were off the fucking chain. Uh, that intro looked like an intro to a TV show, um, like a high quality one. Oh, yeah. And I, I was saying. When we were talking that. Uh, you know, these games are rooted in being in the wilderness, no matter what. They're rooted in the wilderness where the last one was in the middle of what the fuck, Oklahoma or something like that. I get Montana, yeah, mid, Midwest. Somewhere, yep. um, mm -hmm. You know, tropical islands, middle of Africa. And I said they can't really stray and be in the middle of a city. And Far Cry 6 came out and said, fuck you. We're going to be <laughs> in the middle of the city. You know, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of tropical stuff, but they showed some. Right. The screenshot showed some high-rise buildings, like legitimate. There's going to be two different biomes that you have to deal with. And I'm going to be super curious to see how that affects gameplay, because that will affect gameplay. We've got something we haven't dealt with before. And Yeah, no, I'm a, super excited. Yeah, and a series that's been sort of stuck in its own sort of thing, so... Yeah, I would say I, I, you're right. It has been stuck, but um, I guess I didn't mind the formula they were following, where they're going to these tropical or like uh, lush environments, you know, with vegetation, with trees, and that kind of thing. And that was the schematic. I didn't mind that because I think they always push the the story and the villains forward. But also when they bring up the right. idea of uh, yeah, let's tackle a city, I love that even more. So, and yeah. then you add on the Breaking Bad character. His name is uh, what Giancarlo Esposito. He plays uh, Gus Fring. They're just getting this AAA talent. I mean, I'm just so fucking stoked for this. Yeah, yeah, they're pulling out all the stops. Um, something I would love to see. I, I was honestly thinking about this the other day. I'm like, you've never had a game uh, take really the first person perspective of a child. Like, there's no, like, being a short person in a game. Mm. That's the last time you had to look up. So it would be so interesting if you get a play as a kid and you're doing all this terrible shit. It's a little bit, little bit lower <laughs> And that weird perspective uh, that would give. Um, that being said, I wonder if there's rules and regulations uh, within the industry where they won't let you play as a kid murdering people. I don't know. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Um, and I, they've they've come out and they've talked to the, the main dude plays a villain. Some of the devs have talked about how you are playing some kind of freedom fighter, but sure. you're going to interact with Gus Fring or with the that, the, the main guy, um, Giancarlo Esposito. You're going to interact with that character, with that villain, but also the kid as well. So they're kind oh, of so playing with not. the fact that, yeah, you're not playing as the kid, but he's kind of in the wings and 
seems like you have this element of choice whether like what you decide to do uh, dictates how this kid whether he turns just as evil as his dad or Ooh. goes another route it seems like they're that's playing confirmed? around with that idea no that's not confirmed but like in the trailer it seems like they're giving you there's some kind of choice element because the kid isn't yet uh villainous it's just his dad who yeah. is and he's a he needs and he's a kind of uh having him under under his wing and so that's a debate as as your other character because you are playing you're playing a freedom fighter and so mm. you're not going to be that kid but will you influence the the trajectory he go, he goes on that if if that's true then that's incredibly interesting that's a mm. story that i don't think has been told in games yeah, uh, and, that, and, and that's sort of something that you know kind of brings it back to like and that was an interesting element with far cry 3 which is your character grows to love killing people like you're finding you find out that you're a crazy person or you're a psychopath right you right. find out that that's your jam so this would be sort of another cool you know path through something that hasn't been talked about before uh that could be that could be incredible really that could be dope and uh i do like some of the interviews i think ign did an interview with the main villain and he's comes from this like more of a, a classically trained actor so he was yeah. more interested in that character this villain because he's more they're trying to humanize him a bit more and he's not just like a crazy insane person if you look at far cry 5 those three like religious zealots that you fight against they're very they're they're insane they're taken over by their religion and all the other villains in like far cry history are always just crazy they're kind of like a uh, blue point since or three, blueprint crazy since, since three, three two had a really cool subtlety where you thought the villain was crazy but he's actually the good guy. Spoiler alert for a 15 year fucking old game, but <laughs> I never finished a, it. Yeah. That was a really cool plot. Halfway through, you find out the guy that you've been hunting this whole time rescues you from uh, a burning building and points out that, yeah, I'm not the bad guy. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I guess, yeah, since three, then they've always kind of followed this and it's always, it's, it's still interesting, but they're just kind of sure. like these, these um, just standard, like crazy characters. And this seems like they're trying to build this more humanized. Yeah. He's still, you know, a villainous character, but they're trying to flesh out him more as a character. I dig that this time around. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's, I mean, he's definitely, I mean, yeah, I, I can the, the whole like handing his son a grenade and pulling out the pin thing. Like, I don't know what to like, right. No, that's bad. That a good guy. <laughs> but no, <laughs> I mean, that's at the same time. That's like, you know, we have like people here in America that will like, you know, shoot the, shoot the dog just to show that, you know, all things die. It's like, that's what we could have right. done this a different way. We could have waited <laughs> till grandma died and then just, okay, well, that's all things. I don't. Okay. <laughs> No, you're right. The trailer doesn't show that as much. It's just the interviews with that main dude. He's talking about like yeah. that's what drew him to that character is that they're really letting him um, flush out that that idea. But um, no, sure. super stoked. Um, as far as like locking down a date, they did give a, a, a February 18th, 2021 date. It's coming to current gen and uh, next I gen. It. I promise you. It, not hitting. Yeah. Well, Far Cry 5 was what? That was uh, last year or the year before? Maybe the year before, right? Like 2018? I would like to say at least the year before, but I don't mm. know. Because it was that DLC that was uh, maybe a six months where you you played yeah. against the sisters and that, that like post apocalyptic. Um, so I mean, you're right. Maybe they they won't hit this time frame, but uh, that's what they're saying. It is projected to be on Stadia as well and PC. Uh, who knows what Stadia? Because I don't know what the what the fuck's oh, going that's on right. over there. Yeah, they mentioned Stadia. I th I think the other big thing that we talked about is um, you know when we watched the Ubisoft press conference. Uh, I never really felt like any of these games looked next gen. And then you you showed me the the screenshots of this. Now we haven't seen it in motion yet. Right. But this looks next gen. I don't know if this is a next gen exclusive. Um it's fucking gorgeous. And in first it, person, you have to put in that much more effort to make it fucking gorgeous. So Yeah, you're totally you're totally right. Uh I mean really if they're using which they I imagine they are that same engine that Far Cry five was on, I'm not sure if that was Unreal or what it, what uh, what have you, but it looked really gorgeous on current gen consoles and then on PC it looked even better. So if they're just using that same engine and just working on it, they can really push it to the limit. And then of course if you're seeing I don't know if those screenshots were the next gen releases or the PC releases. Usually they use like the PC to kind of show off the stuff first. But sure. um I imagine it's still gonna be just on par with the with, with Far Cry five with how detailed it was. The the other thing worth noting, um, well, I don't know if it's worth noting, but I, mm. I, as far as CG trailers go, holy fucking shit, was that gorgeous. There are definitely points where you could forget that that was CG. That's how 
much rendering time they spent like there was clearly more time at the rendering farm for this trailer than there was for the entirety of the hobbit trilogy and <laughs> i i would almost put money on that like this was stupid pretty uh the yeah. only thing that broke my immersion was the mouth movements of uh the one guy uh the the guy gotcha. from breaking bad uh yeah. something about his mouth looked unrealistic and i would and that's been an issue in in these CG trailers forever. We if we can fix whatever that mouth movement issue is, dude, Uncanny Valley was almost defeated this weekend. Yeah, I mean, if you look at what Naughty Dog does with their motion capture stuff, and that's in game, those yeah. look. I mean, that's cream of the crop right there. So it is doable. I think we're going to see that this this next gen coming up. They're really going to push that limit of that Uncanny Valley, and maybe it is a thing of the past. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, that looked gorgeous. Cool. Now, this next one wasn't as gorgeous, but it's kind of standard. It's the Valhalla. They showed off uh, quite a, a, a lengthy you know, gameplay trailer, which is cool that it was actually gameplay this time. This A lot of it did leak last week, but they had some details. Um, so really, they just um, showed off more of the game. They locked down a November 17th uh, date, and it's on current gen. Still no date or no, no locked-in date for the next gen releases, but they have confirmed this will be a free upgrade if you do buy this version of it. It looks, you know, we say not like that, the greatest looking, but that being said, um, I think that came from our little conversation of it doesn't look next gen. And I would argue, yeah, it doesn't. It looks a lot like Rise Son of Rome or some other games. That being said, it is really pretty. Um, yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't kick it out of bed for eating crackers. That's for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't look next gen. Looks gorgeous. And from the impressions, watching a few videos on people who got to play it for hours, I think something really, really cool, and I hope this gets to be a trend, is Ubisoft uh, stream these games uh, via cloud, uh, like I would love for Microsoft to do, but they they stream via cloud uh, to tons of content creators uh, to be able to play these games via, I always forget what this service is called. Um, is, so the, is it Uplay, or is that just the name of, they have another... Do they have a cloud thing, or is that just their the marketplace for buying the games? But um, um, yeah, I'm not sure if they have their own kind of proprietary. Photon. I, th I want to say it was Photon. No, not Photon. Okay. Uh, shit, what's it called? Uh, Ubisoft. Have other games uh, released that, like that with Ubisoft? Uh, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, I anyway, haven't heard that, but it would be dope. Yeah, there's this really cool, like, it's sort of, it's not quite a cloud service. And this is something I was looking into it, uh, honestly, the other week, because when I was talking about, like, you know, me working on the game and testing with you remotely, uh, there's this service um, where, yeah, I could run it on my machine and just stream a feed to you. Uh, and it'd work just as good, if not better, than the uh, Steam uh play together system gotcha. uh, and people have been using it to just stream their their work pcs to their home pcs so they can have all that stuff at work they don't have to upload it to their own computers um and that's what they use to stream this to uh content creators so they got to play it uh they said that the connection was pretty darn good and gotcha. um yeah so that was really cool that so many got to pe people got to play it and they got to play a big chunk of it too uh and then when it was all done ubisoft uh, sent them over the footage so that they oh, okay. could they could show that uh so there's just there's tons of coverage from this content uh from this from this and probably more so than we would have gotten at an e3 the fact that they can let a single content creator play for four hours per game that's watchdogs for four hours then valhalla for four hours that's you would never get that at an e3 that is impossible right so Damn, cool yeah. on Ubisoft for doing that. I wonder if that's also them being pushed by the realities of like COVID right now, where they have mm -hmm. that's the only yeah. way to get this out in the fast uh, in the fast way to have you know content creators uh, play this. But either way, I mean the infrastructure is there where they can do this kind of thing. Yeah. The other thing I thought was cool, apparently, uh, the, the 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 person I was watching ACG, they kind of mentioned that um, the 
uh, people that for every person playing, they they had somebody there watching in case they had any mm. questions, but they would let them fuck around and also gotcha. fuck up. So they were like, they're they wouldn't answer, they wouldn't tell them how to do something unless they asked, which I thought was that's great. That's that's a quality demo. And then ACG was trying to break uh, Watch Dodge Legion the whole time he was playing it. <laughs> so he was trying to find. So apparently these quests to like recruit the people. Uh, I don't mean to jump immediately to Watch Dodge Le- Legion. But uh, apparently the quests to recruit people, uh, there's a lot of steps to them. Uh, they're a lot more complex than the initial trailer led on. Um, he said, you know, it'd be three, four or five step quests. And um, so that that honestly increased your investment in that character. You mentioned one of his favorite characters they recruited. She has no special powers. She has none. She just has booty shorts and uh, and. Uh, and gambling debt and that's her story <laughs> but he's like but i worked for that i worked for this character she's mine and then when it brings into uh like they try and bring in other elements to it like one person's like their their wife was being arrested unfairly so they came over and rescued their wife uh and started doing these recruitment missions to bring her into it so now you have this husband and wife team uh yeah. in with your crew and it's just weird this game is so complex there's there's a chance that I mean this is kind of the thing people are saying there's a chance that they've actually done what they set out to do which is insane that should be <laughs> impossible this should not be doable it's glitchy as fuck but this game might exist yeah that's what I've been hearing too some of the gameplay uh, thoughts were that there are there are definitely glitches and it's still you know we have a couple months before this is uh, supposed to come out this holiday season but there is glitches, and I think we'd expect that. But if they can nail down the yeah the ability to have these characters, all the NPCs, if they're fl- flushed out enough to make it interesting, then that's awesome. That's what they promised, and they'd be right. achieving that. Uh, that's pretty nuts. I did see, I think it was GameSpot had a gameplay overview. They're talking about it. One of the characters that they had acquired was uh, their special ability. They just had a big fucking wrench, and that was right. the whole thing. It's like, I got a melee weapon, and that's it. You know, But like you can kind of choose who you have, and or they have hacking abilities, and other you know other techniques and so it's just cool cool idea to kind of create this you know ragtag group of people that you fight with well i guess that's that's sort of the weird thing with it too that sort of and 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 i think it's sort of systemic it's sort of our brains are filling in the gap but um you know we're making these storylines with that like the girl that just had a gambling debt and he's like she's just that much cooler because that's that's her like we got these people out there with superheroes but like the guy with a wrench like it's this weird strange sense of personality that our brains are making out of these characters fuck this game might be good like that's that's (laughs) so cool the other thing you mentioned so this is the party he was trying to break so you can you can recruit apparently anybody um and he was trying to get a repeat story he was trying to get a repeat recruit mission and he didn't find one in four hours and he was trying his damnedest so yeah maybe Mm. after four hours you can find another repeat story but he was he was trying his best and he didn't get it. And that's crazy impressive. Yeah. I imagine so, under the hood, they're doing a lot of are they possibly like just generating the different like abilities and that kind of thing in the background? It's sure. not all baked in. It's just kind of like dynamically, which I like that idea. If that's what's going on, that no playthrough is going to be the same because you can find these people that are just their abilities are <laughs> randomly generated, which is it's going to keep that idea of like replayability up and all that. The difference between like your playthrough versus mine, we're going to encounter the different people with different sets of abilities. Right. Yeah. It 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 seems like they've they've really achieved that. Um, people were saying that the gameplay variety is there um and like yeah you could have you know the granny army like they promised you could but it's like why would you <laughs> when you can have all these interesting casts of characters in your playthrough and they're like it's weird but in that short amount of time my little family started to feel like a family and it was mine and yeah wow <laughs> Wait, what a what a technical achievement uh, Although I, I want that granny army. I, I definitely, that's my sure. first goal is to build just a granny <laughs> army of badass old ladies. But they can't parkour. That's the issue. They can't properly parkour. What so if I find a couple old ladies that can? They still got some, you know, moving in their in their knees. They're still not, they're yeah. maybe they're ex-Olympic uh, runners or something and we're, we're, we're good. Yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting. I do wish, uh, they, they mentioned, I guess the gameplay, or the gunplay is not that great. Um, mm. But in the press conference, they showed off sort of very much like a, a john wick 
slash Leon the professional style character. I mean, his name was literally Leon. He was wearing the <laughs> Leon glasses. Yeah. So, but um, it would be cool if he had, you know, a little bit more, like maybe he has some auto aim or maybe he has something that, yeah, when you're playing him, he feels more like this lead assassin. Uh, or maybe he does, and I just don't know because I haven't fucking played. Um, <laughs> but that's... I'm, it's I'm, interesting because there was a lot of promise. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. We were so uh, very skeptical. It's like, how are you going to pull this off? But uh, yeah. it seems like they're getting there. And now, now it's a matter of making sure the entire world, the mechanics, the gameplay isn't super buggy to take away from the fun you'd have acquiring this team and whatnot. Right, right. Yeah, you do your five missions and the game bugs out and then you don't get the character and you're just pissed. Um, right. So... I don't know. It looked like in the footage I saw, there was a lot of bugs, which is concerning since it is launching so soon. Those are going to be hard to iron out. Uh, it is possible they'll pick fix those post launch, but yeah, it's October. It's October twenty ninth is what they're saying. So yeah, I, mean, I guess the we'll thing see. that got me excited is multiple streamers are saying this was it was on their radar, but they didn't care, and then they played it, and then they cared. That's huge. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with this, with the series in general, but especially this third one. Although what makes the third one interesting is that whole NPC mechanic. If they didn't have that, and if it was just like the same yeah. kind of style of gameplay than the last one, I don't know. It would not be as interesting. There's, there's literally nothing you could have done with that. Of course, what do they get? Can they make a sequel to this? If this achieves what they're wanting, you can't top this. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess they just maybe they fully flesh out or like expand on the abilities you can have, how how random the people you find are, like if they just work on that. But uh, you're right. I mean, let's see if they can nail this and then yeah. then it's up to them to <laughs> to to achieve the next one. But yeah, but uh, the last thing they showed off or one of the last things was this. It was kind of a bummer because it's uh, we've had a lot of teases of a Tom Clance of a Splinter Cell, you know, reboot, and we got to see Sam Fisher again, but it's in this this mobile game. So I have the I have the trailer pulled up too, but it's uh, for this one we go to Destructoid. Chris Moise has the details. Tom Clancy Elite Squad mobile game. Uh, during yesterday's Ubisoft Forward presentation, fans of the Splinter Cell franchise once again walked away empty-handed. The only <laughs> reference made to the long dormant stealth series was the appearance of its protagonist Sam Fisher in a new trailer for upcoming mobile title called Tom Clancy's Elite Squad. Uh, so the Elite Squad is a tactical RPG, which utilizes a roster of stars pulled from various Ubisoft franchises. That's what's kind of cool, this one. So alongside Mr. Fisher, Elite Squad boasts stars such as The Division's Megan, Ghost Recon's Nomad, and Weaver, and Rainbow Six Siege's Mont Montague, Montagne, and Caviera. In the new trailer, some of these trigger-happy maniacs were seen rescuing, of all people, El Sueño, antagonist of Ghost Recon Wildlands. Sueño is a real bad dude, cool. so Sam Fisher better know what he's doing. So he's like this tatted-up uh, gangster, and he was the main protagonist in uh, in Ghost Recon Wildlands. And But in the, in the trailer... Uh, yeah, you're right, antagonist. Whoops. And then, uh, so you're the whole game. I guess you're trying to fight, bring down this dude. And this like kid friendly mobile game, you're breaking him out of jail in the trailer. But uh, the trailer, I don't know if you've seen it. It looks very uh, Fortnitey. It's very cartoony. Uh, but it's a mobile game, apparently. Yeah, it looked like a tactical mobile game. Um, you know, not for me, but right. I do like the idea of them merging the different, uh, you know, characters because it's really they, they could pull from that because they do have quite sure. a bit of games now. You have stuff you can pull from uh, from Ghost Recon, from Rainbow uh, Six Siege. You can do all that and make something. The, what the the end result isn't something for me, but I like that they have these characters now that they can mine from and build some kind of like battle all stars kind of thing. Right. I I think the thing that surprised me for this whole press conference is that I. For sure, thought we were gonna get to see that that uh, weird uh, Rainbow Six game they're working on. I forget what it's called, like Rainbow Six Infection or something like that. Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, I thought we were getting that, so it feels like it's been enough time. So yeah, that was yeah, not even like a teaser, like a CG something, like nothing like that. But you're right. Well, they did say they're doing another one of these. Uh, they didn't. I don't know if they said how far off, but they did. So maybe we'll see it at them then uh that's sort of hmm. weird that they're spreading out the love like that uh maybe just <laughs> just some stuff wasn't ready in time um uh, but yeah I was you know surprised. what good they did mention they're gonna have another ubisoft forward too so that was one of the things i missed in the article so the company said right. it plans to hold another ubisoft forward showcase later this year we only have what four months you know or five months before the end of the year so they could potentially maybe that's what they're holding off on showing some of the like truly next gen stuff they're working on right yeah that's what i was just saying Gotcha. Um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. So, but I don't know. It's just weird because it's E3 season. You think they would have had it? 
Um, but that being said, you know, Corona's derailed a lot of shit, so maybe yeah. that was a factor. Um, That's true. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good solid press conference. I would. Th- I think the one comment I saw from a stream when I was watching it was like, "You'd think after the Microsoft presser, they would have learned like lead with gameplay, and they should have learned that lesson." Yeah. Um, but the trailers at least were good. I thought the Watchdog trailer was good. Um, obviously, the Far Cry trailer was good, and the Valhalla trailer. Shut the fuck up and show Valhalla. <laughs> Like, yeah, that one. Uh, I'm interested to see once people get in their hands what the reviews are, but it looks really dope. I just and I'm I'm interested in that whole like Norse kind of, you yeah. know, and it's like it's taking place with real time events or real life events where it's it's uh, in England dealing with the Vikings and that whole clash. So it could be cool, but um, we'll see how they how they pull that off. But uh, to segue into our next uh, weekend uh, bonanza, there was a Devolver Digital had their showcase as well. Uh, what were your just initial thoughts watching that? Because I, I love these fucking things. They're so yeah. uh, meta, the way they really just kind of squeeze the balls of the industry and, and criticize it. And they're able to do that in a way that no one else even tries to do. I don't feel like they're normally that meta, but that mm. this one was extremely meta. Um, that, be, that being said, I, uh, like, I don't love the Devolver Digital uh, conferences as much as uh, everyone else does. Um, I don't really particularly like the uh sort of adult swim style humor um but that being said it's devolver like they gotta do it that way they should do it that way uh to be on brand um that being said if you didn't know uh, not only devolver is a game publisher they're also a film publisher and they publish i just learned that recently right yeah yeah and they whipped out they're they're acting and editing and filming chops on this one they went ham um yep. personally my favorite one of all time uh super meta on the whole like you know people are like the hype of a game more than they like the game itself which is fucking true uh yeah <laughs> and uh so we're dealing with the anti-hype by releasing uh that game and yeah the games they weren't that many but they looked really good uh, the performances were top fucking notch. Which I wanted to say, so the main host, I forget her name, she's like the main character and kind of represents these Devolver Digital uh, events, but she has that one-shot scene. I think it's her where she's introducing uh, Devolver Land or whatever that ended up being called. Um, yeah. She's introducing that and she has like the tears rolling down her eyes. It's all one shot and it's just a, a nuts performance. I mean, yeah. just kudos to her. That was, that was fucking awesome. Those tears were intense too. You could like, you could... <laughs> You can feel those things pump out of her. And she got both of them too. Like, I understand some yeah. people, sometimes people do the one. She got both tears, one shot. This huge monologue. You can't fuck that up. I mean, she's a, she's a boss, dude. It was nuts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just everyone in that was was spectacular. The plot was good. I don't know how you top that next year. Um, there wasn't a little like a teaser because they kind of ended the last uh, series of them with uh, like a some kind of intro into something else crazy going on. And sure. this one, they they didn't really end it that way. But uh, I found it interesting. But either way, I mean, yeah, I was blown away. And that's yeah. what I, I come to those these events now more or less so for the announcements and more for just like the, the crazy shit that goes on. Right. right. Um, and then there was the Devolver. I forget what it's called. Devolver Land Expo or whatever it was yeah. um, where you get to go into the building, which you said was crashing on your computer, which sucks uh go ahead they announced today too that there's they're they're tweaking it they're updating it because i guess other people were experiencing some kind of problem with it I, okay. it kept crashing for me as well but uh, they are working on that because i do want to jump in and experience that what did you how did you like you know cruising the little show floor that they had it was great that was really fun um there's just enough gaminess into it like it's not hard like you just shoot the things with your t-shirt cannon to stop them from stopping you um so yeah it's it's not hard but that's just enough gaminess to kind of keep your brain going and keep you fun. And you're going around these gorgeous, like, I don't know how long they've been working on this for. Yeah. This is the team that works on Shadow Warrior, Flying Wild Hogs. And uh, man, the quality is great. The graphics are insane. Um, and then you get to go along, like the file size is big. That's for damn sure. But because uh, it's packing in these high, these are high definition trailers. Um, I don't know if they're 4K or what they were. Um, but what a phenomenal way, uh, to get me excited for your game. Um, and 
yeah, there was cool. Like some of these, they were like, you know, where we were getting trailers before you get like developers talking over it. Like, especially, uh, what is it? The weird West or whatever. Um, yeah. that was a really cool, like talking about all the systems and neat things that are going to be in that game. Um, it's got me super hyped now. That seems like, like somehow someone fused breath of the wild with fallout in the wild west with magic yeah and that's hot that's <laughs> fucking hot like you can you can kill off characters and that will change the story or they'll come back later and try and get revenge if somebody in that party survives that's um cool. you know it's got the whole like element system and all these systemic things like this game because it's not that pretty they can just go ham on everything else gotcha yeah, no. Would you? It's safe to say that was the one you're most excited about uh, from the from the events, like that uh, Weird West. Yeah, yeah. After specifically after that trailer, I that sold me. Gotcha. Yeah, and they showed off Weird West. They they went to depth on that. There was a Carry On. That was a big one for me. A carry On, Carry On, uh, where you're this red amorphous blob that's just fucking wreaking havoc in this like scientific lab. Right. I loved it. It's so gory, and I just I love the the. The thing, John Carpenter's The Thing, I'm a huge fan of that movie, and there's elements in that trailer where you're just, like, taking over scientists and exploding them from within, and those little, little like, string effects going on, and just, it's so gory and, and awesome. Man, that one's, that one's definitely what I took away from, uh, I'm super excited for that. And that's very soon, it's July 23rd on that. Yeah, that's coming out super soon. Looks better than it ever has mm. um, in previous ones, and it, there's nothing like that out there. Absolutely no. nothing. Um, what else do they cover? Uh, by the way, do you cover Nintendo at all in this? I did not. I, I, I've been so like what, going over these two big events that I didn't realize Nintendo. They had their direct, right? I'm not sure what they focused on. They, yeah, they did their treehouse. Nobody reported on it. So I don't know if anything <laughs> happened. Uh, the only thing I want to say is like there's that new Paper Mario that comes out like Friday. Um, Are you serious? Yeah. Whoa, it's super under the radar, but that's a yeah. huge uh, release. Yeah, it's got me worried that they're not amping it up. Hmm. But uh Yeah, is it the not the Origami King, that's an older one. That is the new one. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Wow, yeah, so, that's coming up. That's but uh that's good. As far as the other stuff on the Devolver, they had Fall Guys, which that one didn't really call out to me, but I guess people are stoked for that. That's oh, that cartoony I'm so looking. So excited for that. Dude, it's like it's oh, okay. like it's I mean it's like wipeout which I think all of us want to participate in the game show Wipeout. Um, <laughs> so it's like Wipeout, but now 60 players are doing it all at once. And A, from a networking perspective, how the fuck did they pull that off? That is so much networked collision, and that's super hard. Physics. Now it's 50 people? 60. 60, damn. Okay, wow. All I didn't crammed that. together. That's hard to network and yeah, they sure. somehow have this working. So uh, there's that like it just looks like a big, dumb, fun thing uh, where you can get together and compete. Yeah, lovely, fucking lovely. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And there's so much physics involved. It's got to be hard to like uh, make it run under the hood. But that the footage looked like it was running fine. And um, yeah, that one, maybe it's maybe it's a more like a. A sneaky kind of thing that will I'll find fun. Uh, it just wasn't. I didn't realize that it was a thing, or it wasn't on my radar. And sure. maybe once I get my hands on it, but um, no, it's it's cute as hell. It's cartoony and it does look fun. But um, yeah, I'm anxious to see what people think of it. Yeah, I I bet you'll like it. I know you said it's not on your radar, but I bet like we get together, we get some beers, and we're just like laughing at the fact that we got launched off the fucking planet by some <laughs> weird squirrely do, and then rooting for the other person and try and make it to the end, like. Right. I, I think it'll be fun. It's going to be big, dumb fun. <laughs> I mean, there's never been an, anyone who's been able to do this before. So that's, it's pretty cool. That's another, there's nothing else like this one. Yeah, no, for sure. There was uh, some other stuff. We got Serious Sam, got a story trailer, which I thought was interesting. Um, but also what was really cool was to see the, because when they first announced it, it was uh, being promoted as coming to Stadia first, which I think that's still the case, but now it's being promoted as Stadia and PC. And I think it's within the same window or if not the same date. So I feel like they kind of rolled that back. It's not just for Stadia, it's for PC within a very short window. So it's not just locked to Stadia as we thought it was in the past. Oh, strange. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened behind the scenes if they 
why that decision was made, but I'm glad because I w- I'd want to play, play this on PC and not Stadia, I think. I think the the thing that's disappointing to me with that game is so the graphics aren't very good. Um, they're good enough, but I, and they showed that they can put like, you know, basically like a thousand enemies on screen at once. So like, I thought that's why the graphics weren't that great. So you could hmm. pump way more enemies on the screen. Um, but that being said, you even had that technology back in like Gears of War 2 with, uh, I forget what it's called, um, instancing, uh, where you can just have tons and tons and tons of the same character model on screen. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know where they're going with this. Like, fill that screen with uh, with just bad guys and mow them down or I don't know. Well, even uh, Days Gone did that recently, that zombie uh, PS4 yeah. title. There's a ton of enemies on screen. And this one, yeah, they're doing, they're doing a lot of enemies, but not as much as, I guess, like you would imagine. Um, I did notice the trailer seemed a little bit like the frame rate seemed choppy. I don't know if that's how the game's performing or that was just the trailer or what, but it uh, wasn't as smooth as I would want it to. But there's a lot going on on screen. I just don't know if that's the reality of it, but other yeah. games are able to pull that off. Right. Yeah. No, it was strange. That felt strange to me. What'd you think of? There's a new one or a game that I didn't realize was was happening, but it's coming out in fall. It's uh, Alija on PC and Switch. It's didn't like that care. 8 bit. Yeah. Really? That one looked didn't really, care. really dope. I, I did agree with like the streamer I was watching. It's like, this is definitely a like retro style game where I wish there were more pixels. Uh, it's too low res, uh, in my opinion. Mm. Um, I disagree. I mean, it's the, whatever it is, it's calling out to me the the style that they're doing it. I guess you could argue there's a lot of games, argue, there's a lot of games that are doing this, that are approaching this, and maybe it's kind yeah. of a, I don't know, it's it's a crowded market, but something about it really, really called out to me. Yeah, could be fun. Um, but I also hate when they don't do the, they don't respect like the resolution and when they're doing mm-hmm. that where you can have these weird like angled pixels or sub pixels. Um, always bugs me. But yeah, I think uh, as a as a whole, uh, that that resolution on the artwork should have been higher. Um, but the game, gotcha. I don't know, it looks okay. Yeah, you are more of a you're a pixel purist. I think I found with some of the pixel art games. Oh, it's pixel enthusiast. I guess you could call it. You just got to do it right. Like just being <laughs> low res doesn't, you know, that's not an excuse for looking bad. You know gotcha. what I mean? I mean, I did find when I was watching the trailer, it was hard to kind of make sense of exactly what was going on. Like with your character, it's a lot of, you know, just kind of uh, convoluted. It was a lot in one area, but yeah. uh, I still dug it. But I could tell like maybe it would be a different situation when you're playing and trying to figure out where your character is exactly. But you have this kind of slingshot blade mechanic that was dope. Um, yeah, I'm interested to try this. It comes out soon, uh, fall 2020. So I think I might try this on Switch. I feel like this is a good Switch game. Yeah, yeah. They did show as well the the one from Ronimo Games. I forget what that game is called. Oh. Mm. There's Disc Room. Is that one of them? No. Well, I mean that's that's from Young Wilhelm, um, okay. who I I love and will have his babies. Um, <laughs> he's the guy that made Minute, so that's why I love him. Oh, okay. Uh, Blightbound. Um, Blightbound. I'll put a I'll put a quick. Put this just uh, behind Oja. Put the oh, link right you. there for you. Yep, I'm loading up right now. But yeah, Blade Bound. I don't know. It almost reminds me of like a. It feels like someone took the concept of uh, Castle Crashers, made it three player, um, but made that three player really intense. Mm. Um, so, like a Diablo mixed with uh, Castle Crashers, and it looks. Uh, gorgeous Ronimo games is is nothing but quality um so i think this game could be could be good um gotcha yeah and i guess i did forget about this i'm looking at footage now it looks dope and i guess i'm not the biggest fan of the diablo style of gameplay sure. so maybe that's why I kind of like i brushed it aside the way you looked at Alija. but um no it looks solid uh, i don't know if i'll ever try this but um yeah i didn't realize the pedigree and what that dev's known for either Right, yeah. No, they made one of my favorite uh, MOBAs um, mm. called Awesome Knots, which is like a Saturday morning cartoon style. Um, but the thing is, like, even when you're losing an Awesome Knots, you're still having fun, uh, which is great because you can't say that about literally any other MOBA. <laughs> if you're losing, the world sucks. Um, but gotcha. in Awesome Knots, you're still having fun. You're doing your thing. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that was basically it for for uh, Devolver Digital. Um, I dug the the whole 
announcement, the whole stream. Uh, I'm a big fan of what they do. And um, yeah. I love how they're kind of created this this uh, market where they, I imagine now these these devs that are on the fringe or creating these different experiences are seeking them out and vice versa because they're really oh, yeah. developing this portfolio of just like the mo most unique stuff. Sure. For a long time, I would say with them because it's gotcha. just one of those ones. If you're making this weird kind of game in their style, you definitely want to push it to them. Uh, we did kind of gloss over Shadow Warrior though. Shadow Warrior 3. That's true. Uh, Kind of reminds me a bit uh, more of Doom than uh, Shadow Warrior 2, uh, which I will happily take. I wasn't a huge fan of Shadow Warrior 2. Uh, it felt like, to me, it felt like Destiny, but worse. Mm. Uh, so why would you play Destiny, but worse? I don't even <laughs> like Destiny. That's the on the box art, Destiny, but worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there, was, there was just too many options. It was kind of garbage. But yeah, it looked it more like... Yeah, it looks solid. So I hope it's good. I did buy. It's on. Uh, it was a, a Steam sale. It's like ten bucks for War Shadow Warrior Two, which I haven't played. So I did buy that, and that this makes me think maybe I don't want to play it. But um, yeah, no. I mean, now you gotta play. Now you gotta right. play it. Also, <laughs> uh, it sounds like uh, Lo Wang is back uh, with his shitty jokes, uh, which was uh, definitely one of the worst parts of Shadow Warrior Two. Just you mentioned that. Fuck up, dude. <laughs> uh, that does. That does not. Just spouting jokes does not make a funny game. You gotta, you gotta tie the whole thing together. So. No, you, I mean you're right. I forgot to. We did gloss over it. the The trailer showed off these really cool boss battles with uh, yeah. these just 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 in, interesting uh, looking uh, characters that you're fighting against, and uh, that's what I'm really stoked for. It. I think it does look a bit more actiony or faster paced, like a Doom, but mm -hmm. it has this weird art style that's almost like a. Um, Oh God, now I'm blanking on it, but there's a huge, uh, huge game in this style. But I love how cartoony and over the top it is and sure. very colorful. Uh, I'm definitely stoked to see what people think about it before I try it myself, but it's on my radar for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Nice, Gavin. So yeah, we, we got out of the weekend of smorgasbords of news. Um, this one is uh, maybe a bit boring, but it was interesting, uh, I thought, over the week. Uh, this is Sony acquires minority stake in Epic uh, for $250 million. So this is a pretty big... Uh, uh, putting your dick out on the table and, and measuring kind of move um, towards the future. But uh, so we have the article here from Matt Kim of IGN. Uh, Sony has acquired a minority interest in Epic uh, Epic Games with a strategic investment of two hundred fifty dollars, <laughs> two hundred fifty million dollars. Uh, I could afford that basically, but uh, no, it's two hundred fifty million. The, the minority stake will mean that Sony and Epic will be able to collaborate more closely together in areas of games, entertainment, and technology. The deal means Sony gets a one point four percent interest. Uh, in the game development studio and publisher and gives Epic a valuation of $17.86 billion. For context, Sony paid $229 million for Insomniac in 2019. Epic founder and CEO Tim Sweeney added, Sony and Epic have both built businesses at the intersection of cre creativity and technology, and we share a vision of real-time 3D social experiences, leading to a convergence of gaming, film, and music. Together, we strive to build an even more open and accessible digital ecosystem for all consumers and content creators alike. Tim Sweeney has said that Sony began discussing its $250 million stake in the Fortnite creator after the Unreal Engine 5 PS5 demo, explaining, I guess they liked it, responding to concerns that there was a financial arrangement made behind closed doors to ensure PS5 tech was used to showcase the UA5 demo. Sweeney countered by saying serious investment discussions began after the event. Uh, this is pretty big. Uh, just the fact that they're doubling down and, and or just putting so much money into Epic, but it's also interesting they get such a small stake in the company, but I guess it's still a huge company. Well, I mean, nobody can, because Epic still owns the majority stake, that's sort of the nice thing, is nobody can take over control, uh, which gotcha. was good, because Tencent bought, like, a shit ton of Epic. So, otherwise, we'd have Tencent, you know, in charge. Um, yeah, so it's sort of a move. Uh, it doesn't really do anything. All it literally does is just get Sony some of that sweet, sweet uh, Epic money when they eventually sell those stocks. Um, sure. Yeah, there's not uh, what, much of a story. Go ahead. I was listening to some uh, some uh, podcasters in the industry talk about how, but I mean, we don't know behind the scenes what's going on, but could they also use this as an opportunity to get like stuff exclusively to PS5 or get it there first with their engine stuff? Anything that's maybe on the Epic Game Store, like that goes to PC, maybe it goes to PS5 and Epic Store first, and then it goes to, you know, like Xbox. I wonder if that's that can also happen behind the scenes or it's just them you know, acquiring a percentage of the company just to make money on the back end with Fortnite and other game releases. But uh, what's also tied to Epic is their engine. So do they get, you know, first dibs at UE5 or do they get some kind of timed deal? I don't know, but um, 
I guess it's all, you know, sky's the limit with what could happen. Yeah. I, I don't think it's as intense as people kind of think it is. It's just mm. they're making money. And that's about it's about all you're getting off of that one. But, you know, money is good. We like money. Yeah. Yeah, no, and it's crazy that they paid so two hundred thirty million basically for Insomniac, and they paid two hundred fifty million uh, for just for a small percentage in in Epic. So I guess they're just, and that was getting a studio versus getting a percentage of a company. So there must be something really, there must be a huge future there, or a, or a possibility of making a bunch of money, which is why they would even do this in the first place. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So. Gotcha. That's well, Gavin, we got our last one here is uh, pretty cool, just for Half Life and Valve news, but. Uh, and it's good to get this in the context of what Valve has been doing for a while, because they kind of have been, we've we've talked a lot of shit about them, just kind of what have they been doing? And then, you know, Half-Life, Half-Life Alex came out. It seems like they're resting on the whole Dota su- success, but really looks like they were prototyping a bunch of stuff for the past couple of years that just came to the light of day. Um, so this article here is from Joe Scrabbles of IGN. Mm-hmm. Details of multiple canceled Valve projects revealed, including Half-Life 3. Uh, Jeff Keighley's The Final Hours of Half-Life Alex is a multimedia making of the latest installment in the Half-Life series, which I don't know if you've seen this this thing yet, but I guess it's like this interactive, not video, but it has all the documents and interviews with Valve that Jeff Keighley put out. It's a whole thing. It's pretty crazy to, to pick apart, but uh, in, he goes in, into depth in the, these interviews and exposés with, with Valve, and they talk about all these these projects that they funded and canceled, but... To go back to the article, within the story, Keeley reveals that at least five Half-Life games, not all of which are mentioned specifically in the text, were canceled between Episode 2 and Alex, along with a number of, number of other projects, the most notable being a project officially referred to within Valve as Half-Life 3. Half-Life 3, is, so there's a bunch of other games, but so here's some of the big ones. As in, in regards to Half-Life 3, it was created in Source 2 Engine and drawing some gameplay inspiration from Left 4 Dead Uh, The project known as Half-Life 3 would have used procedural generation between handcrafted story elements to create a more reliable, replayable game, rather. For instance, the game would generate a building and an objective, such as rescuing a prisoner, then create a route through through it and fill the building with enemies, meaning that section would always play out differently. The team went as far as scanning Frank Sheldon, the actor whose likeness was used for the series G-Man. However, the Source 2 engine was unfinished, and the project didn't get very far before it was dropped. It was in development from around uh, 2013 to 2014. So there's also Left 4 Dead. They've tried that, Left 4 Dead 3, an open world game set in Morocco and potentially featuring hundreds of zombies at a time. This was also deemed unworkable because of the unfinished Source 2 at the time. And then Vader, which is this uh, first attempt at the VR index, the Valve index rather. So Valve's first internal attempt to create a VR headset, Vader was designed without compromise, but was scrapped when it became clear that it was too ambitious. The team estimates it would have cost $5,000 per unit if released. Half-Life Alex was initially conceived to launch alongside Vader. Um, but and there's a bunch more uh, different projects. There's another like VR shooter that was going to be based in Half Life. So they're working on just a bunch of stuff. But they, you know, they have the the time and the money to do the the research and to have a dev work on something and then end up scrapping it. But it's a really crazy uh, deep dive, and I recommend uh, checking it out. Yeah, let's look at that. Also, I looked up the the guy uh, that was the inspiration for G Man, and he looks nothing like G Man. Uh, the hairline. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, so what, Frank Sheldon, which is, what's the guy from Big Bang Theory? Isn't that his name, too? Well, yeah, one of the characters is named Sheldon. Okay. <laughs> I've seen a bunch of uh, old uh, white guys pop up. Let me see. Frank Sheldon G-Man. Okay, he vaguely looks like him, I guess. Yeah, they like squish that skull model. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely shaved off a couple of pounds off him, for sure. But A couple? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I wouldn't mind some of this effect on myself if I can get uh, Valve to scan well, my face in this way. Head, is that what you want? You want the skinny head? <laughs> I want the skinny head, yeah. Don't look, that don't look right. G-Man, don't look right. That's not what a human's head looks like. Uh, yeah, but he's, you know, he's skinny. He's got, I'm sure he's got a six-pack under there. I'm, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> now, what do you think of them you know, spending a lot of this time, uh, you know, behind the scenes working on these different uh, failed, you know, attempts at Half-Life 3 and Left 4 Dead 3? I mean, we kind of knew that's what they're doing. Basically, like the 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 Valve, like if you're hired as an employee of Valve, like they basically say you work on what you want to work on. So, mm. yeah, I'm sure now at this point, like now they're hiring people to work more on the store and stuff like that. But your day is your own. Um, they have a really weird kind of business model. Um, yeah. But it works out for them because their competition for whatever reason people are so tied to steam uh that they don't want to use the competition um right 
So yeah, it's it's neat. It doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, people... I guess I was on the outside in looking and and kind of thinking over the years that we we wanted more out of Valve and we didn't get that. But it, I guess it's cool to see that they were trying these different uh, these different um, changes on gameplay or you know actually tackling Half Life Three. And it seemed like on the outside, you know, they were just resting on being so successful with Dota and whatever you know uh, Valve itself or uh, Steam itself. But really, they they were trying. And it's kind of dope that they have the money and time to just throw it at projects. And if something works, it doesn't. And Or maybe one mechanic does and they use that for something else. But yeah. um, it makes more sense now because, yeah, they're such a huge company. You'd have to imagine that they have this ability to just spend the time and money on it. It is surprising that they were going for procedural generation considering that, you know, the Half-Life series of games are some of the most scripted games out there. Right. And that is a strong benefit. Um that being said, with all that time and money that they have, I could see them putting out, you know, an incredible triple A procedurally generated game, which we don't have much of out there. The closest thing we really have is Hades. That does feel triple A, um, even though it's like a, you know, triple I studio, if you will. Um, but it does have that super polished feeling. Um, but yeah, I don't know that we've really seen it. So that would have been cool, but I don't know that Fallout was the uh, the right uh, license to do that with. Hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean it's interesting, and I love that we're getting this these details now from Valve. There be because they've been a lot of they've been really you know closed doors, really restrictive on information coming out, and now with Jeff Keighley's you know blessing with him going and talking to them, and he has such a good relationship with them that goes back years and years. I think the original Half Life he did docs and and uh, stuff with them from since then. So it's cool to see them now talking about it. It just makes me more uh, hyped for them finally you know re- working full force on Half Life Three. And tackling that, uh, I love that they're. That it shows that behind the scenes, they never gave up on that. They were still trying to work on something. Sure, sure, yeah, absolutely. And of course, now we have Half Life Alex, which I'll never be able to play, but um, one day I will sell a kidney or something. A couple of kidneys. You don't need, <laughs> you don't need any kidneys left. <laughs> I'll sell somebody else's kidneys, so so I'll be fine. Oh, there you go. <laughs> which might reminds you if you would take a bath in this uh, thing of ice i have over here at the house for an unrelated reason then that'd be oh, good. yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> i love a good ice bath do you know what i do find myself like i will go down the youtube rabbit hole of half-life alex mods because you can mod it to play in a like flat screen 2d version where you don't need the vr i'm thinking like what if i just do that because that's a way to play the game although that's not the way it's intended to play that yeah. might be the only way i'm going to be able to play this or maybe i just wait Till I somehow scrounge up, you know, a thousand dollars for the index or something like that. Yeah, I think you got to wait on that one. That's a be a big yikes for me, dog. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's hoping soon I'll be able to play it. But uh, yeah, Gavin, that's it. Um, you know, what we do have coming up at the end of the week is is uh, Ghost of Tsushima launches on Friday. I'm super stoked. That's like the basically the last exclusive for PS4 before that's... you know the end of the year, before the end of the cycle for PS4. So I'm very stoked for that. I still can't believe how little we know about Ghost of Tsushima. You're gonna, are you going to buy it? Are you going to go in just fucking blind? Oh, yeah. And, uh... No, so they did a, um, not a Nintendo Direct, but whatever the PlayStation calls, I forget the name of it, but they did one specifically for Ghost of Tsushima, kind of picking apart the mechanics. And it was a good a uh, good 20 minutes where they showed gameplay. They showed what you're going to do, the different styles of gameplay. It's up there. It's actually pretty in-depth. And that actually changed my mind to where I was. It's on my radar now because it was so up in the air. They didn't show much. That was that in-depth, though, of what the gameplay was. Like, yeah, it's we have a bit more, but we, yeah, we don't know that much. So I think that's sort of neat. Mm. This is one of the few games where we've ever just gone out blind, um, largely. I see what you mean. Yeah, I, I, in terms of like comparing to, comparing it to other like AAA releases, it is somewhat you know which restrictive of the information that's out there. But it was yeah. enough for me that made me uh, on board with it because that, uh, the way they're building this world, the options you have, and the gameplay just looks super dope. It's basically Batman and Feudal Japan. Uh, I'm I'm really uh, on board for this game. I'll tell you what, that'll be when I when I borrow your PS3. When you're done with that, <laughs> I'm gonna jump in all the way blind, and we're gonna we're gonna play Batman Ninja. Right. Uh, uh, open world boat jump honor, and uh, <laughs> maybe there's a slicker uh, way to, to uh, title they could work on, but nope. you know, <laughs> absolutely not. 
That's that's the <laughs> slickest that this Rickus can ever do us. <laughs> yeah, man. When you eventually borrow this PS4, it's gonna have all the fucking exclusives and everything, all the bells and whistles. Because I mean, I whenever you're ready to jump in, I have God of War in there. I have Spider Man. I have you know all the Last of Us games. I Ghost of Tsushima, Days Gone, like all even uh, even. Um, Oh, there's a, a newer one that just came out or came to PC this week. Um, Death Stranding. I have Death Stranding on there. I fucking told you I'm not playing this game. <laughs> it was actually dope. It was actually dope. It had some issues, but I, I actually loved it. But um, God, God of yeah. War is definitely the one that's got me most. Because even though I've seen the ending, I don't think that will tarnish any of that game for two seconds. It's no, about no, going through that adventure with your son. Um, which is also weird to me because I thought I was I was thinking about that oddly enough today. I thought Kratos was supposed to be sterile. I thought that was part of his curse. I don't know if in one of the games he became unsterile. Um, I know part I of it. Know. Like, for, did you ever play the first one? Not really. I dipped in here and there with the original ones, but not enough to understand the story. So part of it is like it's weird that there's like a sex mini game because he's literally like I think part of his curse is he's not allowed to feel pleasure. Like he can't feel like food tastes like ash in his mouth. Interesting. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, if that got if he broke that kind of part of the curse or You're right. I'm not sure the with the deep dive on on how he can, you know, get his dick up when really he can't taste anything. So I'm not sure how it works. Can't get your dick <laughs> up if you got can't taste anything. That's the COVID <laughs> promise right there. <laughs> yeah, very true, very true, Gavin. Uh I go to you for all my medical advice, so that makes sense. <laughs> all right gavin yeah we'll end it there chock full of news episode uh where can they find you on the interwebs uh you can find me on twitter.com <laughs> just twitter.com <laughs> at drunk devs on twitter <laughs> you can also find us on twitter.com uh plastic pod on twitter uh that's it for us this week we will see you guys next week Bye bye